When we think of the rotary engine, our minds almost automatically go to Mazda with the two-rotor 13B engine or even some of the crazier three-rotor engines. But they aren't the only company who pursued this technology. GM built their own rotary, Citroen also had a go, and in today's video we will be taking a look at Suzuki's attempt at this awesome engine technology. By the way, I want to make videos on the other company's attempts too, so if you would want to see that, let me know down below and I'll get right to it. Cool, now to Suzuki and their rotary engine. Since Suzuki is so huge in the bike scene, obviously their rotary was designed for use in a bike, and their motorcycle was called the RE5. Now, the Suzuki RE5 was powered by a rotary engine, as I said previously. Specifically, it was powered by a single rotor 497cc engine. The development of the RE5 began in the early 1960s with a Suzuki engineer named, and I'm most probably going to butcher this, Singeyasu Kimiya envisioned a rotary powered bike, and the goal was to make this bike the company's flagship product. Suzuki obtained a license from the NSU, a German automaker, to use the Wankel engine design in 1970. After several years of engineering and prototype testing, the first RE5 was produced in 1974. Now for those that don't know what the Wankel or rotary engine is, well a rotary differs from the traditional reciprocating engine. Instead of pistons, valves and a crankshaft, it employs a triangular shaped rotor that is rotated eccentrically inside of an oval housing. The rotor and housing forms a combination cylinder and combustion chamber. The intake system allows fuel and air to enter and as the rotor rotates the mixture is compressed and expelled through the exhaust. Apex seals at the tips of the rotor maintains efficient movement of the air fuel mixture and exhaust gases within the housing. Now back when the rotary was all the rave, the rotary engine offered several advantages over the conventional engines, such as compact size, a lightweight design and good power. Rotaries also had fewer moving parts compared to piston engines, resulting in reduced complexity. They could rev higher and produce power over a wider range. However, there were significant challenges associated with these engines. They were known to be fickly, requiring high maintenance due to rapid wear of the internal parts, like the apex seals, and those apex seals still is the Achilles heel of these engines. On top of that, rotaries also generated excessive heat. Now while these rotary engines have less moving parts, which in theory should bring down the maintenance costs, because the engines actually ate themselves from the insides, it meant that an old school internal combustion engine was cheaper to keep together. But Suzuki tried to fight some of the issues that rotaries have. You see, Suzuki incorporated various advanced systems into the RE5, increasing its weight and mechanical complexity. For instance, to manage the engine's heat, the bike featured both liquid and oil cooling systems. The exhaust system had a double skin design with cooling fins and forward-facing vents to reduce exhaust temperatures. And to add to the complexity, the ignition system utilized a capacitor discharge ignition system with two separate sets of vacuum and RPM actuated ignition points, despite the engine only having one spark plug. The complexity doesn't stop there though. The RE5 had three separate oil reservoirs, one for the sump, one for the gearbox, and a total loss tank for engine lubrication. Two oil pumps were employed, one for the main bearings and another to lubricate the apex seals. The carburetor used in the RE5 was also more complex than the typical motorcycle carburetor, resembling those found in rotary powered cars. It featured multiple control cables, including one for the carburetor itself, a valve in the intake manifold, and the oil supply for the combustion chamber. In other words, this thing was a big to maintain. Now Suzuki was so chuffed with their latest motorcycle that they enlisted the expertise of renowned Italian industrial designer Giorgetto Giugiarno for its styling, drawing inspiration from the engine's spherical and cylindrical elements. Giorgiorno crafted a distinctive cylinder-shaped tin can instrument cluster housing the clocks and indicator lights, along with the corresponding cylindrical tail light perched on the rear fender. The bike was adorned with circles throughout its design, resulting in a unique aesthetic that may not immediately appeal to everyone, but certainly has its own charm. Additionally, Suzuki offered an optional touring package for the bike, which offered a comprehensive fairing, saddlebags, a luggage rack, and lockable trunk, and various other amenities tailored for touring enthusiasts. Now in the beginning, people loved the idea, but despite the initial positive reviews and endorsements from notable figures like American astronaut Ed Mitchell of Apollo 14, the RE5 faced several significant problems. 
It was criticized for being heavy, complex, and underpowered compared to other motorcycles of the time. There was also a vibration issue. You see, as soon as the bike went over 4000 RPM, this thing would start to shake your dentures out of place. Due to all of these issues, over time the RE5 received negative press, and due to its limited appeal, high cost, and impracticality compared to the traditional piston-powered motorcycles, ultimately Suzuki discontinued the RE5 after only producing around 6,500 units. Despite its unique design and historical significance, the RE5 did not achieve commercial success. The combination of the engine's inherent challenges, the bike's complex system, and their general preference for traditional piston engines led to Suzuki abandoning the rotary engine idea for motorcycles. And that's the story of when Suzuki tried to follow in Mazda's footsteps by producing a successful rotary production engine. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, again, if you did like this video, you'll probably like all of my other stuff, so just go through my channel, see if there's something else you'd like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.